Hey YouTube, welcome to part 10 of the Log Splitter build. In this episode we finish off the building, get the hydraulics connected, and I discover I don't know as much about hydraulics as I had hoped I did. Let's have a look and see what went wrong. I measured up the hoses yesterday and I've got them back today, ready to go on. And I won't pretend it's going to be the prettiest set of hoses in the world, but we'll do the job anyway. Now there's one, two, three, four normal 90s and one long 90 just to make sure that that cleared. The hoses onto the ram just go into a, a straight fitting into an elbow. This has got a 45 on it. It's going to fit down there onto a fitting I've got to put onto the tank. Yeah, that's going to go on there like that. I'm going to have to modify this bracket because... Oh, next time on. Just have to do it again. Uh, I might just get away with only drilling it again, give it a little bit different angle. On the other hand, I've got to go all the way out there with it. That will be a different story. That'll go on like that. Easy peasy. Alright, I can find some washers, split washers and washers to fit this and get him bolted on next. The well, next thing to do is to mount the filter. I've decided that I'm going to mount this filter, the oil coming out of the tank. I had initially thought about doing it going into the tank, but there's no pressure to speak of apart from the suction going out. I think it's fair enough to mount it on the outgoing side. Now, it's not going to stop any debris that comes off the pump from going through the ram, but the high pressure filters are pretty dear, so that's not going to happen. But it will catch any debris that it gets its way back into the tank and coming back and going around the loop again, which is something. Now, realistically, it's all you get with most of the cheaper hydraulics you buy. And uh, yeah, that'll work there. No, I don't want to cut this. Uh, the only way to cut these is with a cut off blade in the grinder. Had I been confident enough in my measurements, I would have got the guy to cut it down the shop. He's got a nice little fixture for cutting these things, which is a lot safer than trying to do it this way. But I wasn't confident enough in my measurements, so I've got to do the best I can to cut it this way. A little bit of due care and attention should be safe enough, I hope. And let's have some safety here. And I'm not sure if I had the camera space right for you to see the sparks coming out of that. But it's got a metal mesh inside the hose rubber. And that's why you need to cut it with the cut-off wheel and the angle grinder. And it leaves a whole lot of rubbish in the tube. If we can get a focus on that there, you can see that piece of metal just sticking out there. So that spirals around the whole tube. I've got two fittings to weld onto the tank. I've cleaned it all off around it. I've fastened this elbow into the fitting. It's just a little pipe fitting with a female thread through it. And I'm going to weld that into the tank. I put the elbow in first because I wanted to get it lined up exactly. I didn't want to trust to the thread indexing. And I am going to TIG weld this. It's been a while since I've done any TIG welding. Right, that's one done. I don't think it's going to leak. Have a look through it. The other one's a little bit more difficult. It's a small screw-on piece that I've just got to weld on to the surface there. These are going to be a little bit trickier. Got him placed right pretty much where I want him. Either. Bit of an overkill on the amount of filler I put in there. There we go. That's all left to do it. Okay, we have a coat of paint, second coat. I'll probably give it a third coat and then I'll be right to mount it. So, uh, day after tomorrow, I guess, it'll be getting put to its paces. 
Okay, this is the housing around the coupling for the from the motor to the pump, and that's it in there. I'm just going to try and show you what needs to be done. It needs to be pushed up in together. I'm going to need both hands to do it, so I won't be able to video what's happening. And then that Allen key there, it's just there, needs to be tightened up. And there's another one that needs to be rotated around a little bit to reach the other Allen key and that needs to be tightened up as well. The first thing to do is push them together so that they make a reasonable contact. Don't have to be real tight but closer together than they are anyway. And then tighten up the Allen keys. I'm just going to put the engine oil in here. It's a dual dipstick, one on each side. I've got a funnel with a little hose in here and I've measured out 1.1 litres of oil which is supposedly what this takes. There's going to be a bit of a slow feed down into here. So I've got myself a chair to be comfortable. Yeah, it's a bit higher on the back. This is just as boring but far more comfortable. Running well on wood, and although that could stand another coat of paint, I'm going to call it good enough. All the hoses on, now that needs to be settled in. Let me see if this is going to work for me. Okay, it's just hold it pretty still. Just a matter of whether it's too loose over time. If it does, I'll have to put a metal strap there like they do on the caravans. That will do for now. Don't forget to put the filter on before you boil it. Oh, take the plastic cap off before you try to put the filter on. Needed to be. Alright, get some oil for it. I've just got that for a cap on it. I'll give it a bit of a screw down. It's just a bit tight, I think, because there's probably some paint in the threads. Right, last of all, I need to put a little bit of air in the tyres and I can wheel them outside and try it. I'll just see if I can get it to give us a bit of a start here now and see if we pump fuel and everything. Fuel's on. Gates on. Throttle somewhere. That's what's on properly. Annoyed with it. Huh, did not do that one up properly. No, I haven't done any of these up properly. Oh, that one is. I hope that one is because I can't get onto it. Alright, let's try again. That's what the cat leader is for. Here's that for a fish. That can't be so unwell, isn't it? That's all. Sure. Start again. Thank you.
Bell. Alright, well, I've got some leaks to fix before I can get this going. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you found something useful in it. If you'd like to download the plans for this vlog splitter, they're available on my website. Just remember I'm not an engineer and anything you build from the plans is entirely at your own risk. I provide them for educational purposes only. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.